this movie consists of 200 frames and uh, that's uh, eight seconds and sometimes you wish to combine the individually rendered images into one movie file and at the end of this tutorial I'll show you how I do this on a Windows machine. Hi there, this video will be outdated pretty soon. It's the beginning of April in the year 2018 and Solid Angle, which is the company, <laughs> nice mouse over, very nice, uh, the company uh, which created Arnold, which is the default uh, renderer in Maya, just released version 5.1 and one of the major advances here seems to be the Toon Shader, which is here. We're excited to bring you Arnold 5.1, featuring a set of powerful new tools to help deliver a better rendering experience to artists everywhere. And uh, one of the things is the Toon Shader. And you can download it uh, by going to the Maya section and uh, you need an account there. It doesn't cost anything. And I'm working with a student edition uh, of Maya 2018.2 currently and uh, it just it's a download and you just uh, quit Maya and uh, then restart Maya and then you have the access to that tune shader. Here is the first brief description about how to use it and for example here we have something which sounds very cryptic. The tune shader supports line color and width control. Both of these are useful for avoiding whatever. Um, to view the tune edge, you must change the filter type sampling settings to contour. Note that decreasing the contour filter with uh, will increase render times. Oh, where is this? Where is that filter type? I was searching for it quite a while, and um, well, I'll show you the way how to activate this tool. So this is a brand new scene nothing's in the scene and we'll place a plane in the scene which will be the ground where everything happens. Then we'll get a dancer from general editors content browser and for example here in the motion capture section it doesn't really matter but uh, uh, choose this uh, the dance number two. And the dancer is right here on that huge plane now we introduce a light. Let's introduce an area light, which we need to scale up and move it to the back and a little bit up. Rotate it like this. And I know when I render it, it's going to be black, more or less. There's something to see here, but actually only if you know that there is something. You click on Normalize. So that's always a good starting point with this light and then you increase the intensity like this and we also introduce a pretty low performance light the sky dome light with where we reduce the intensity to 0 0.2 so we have a basic illumination of the scene and um, I move this light further up and I hide the lights here in the viewport. So that's what I have now. We're getting close to the tune shader. Be patient please. Bear with me. Right mouse click here. Let's create a spherical harmonics object. Arrives in the scene in the center of course. Scale it up. And uh, we go to the in the attribute editor to the polysphere shape. And here we can click on random and we get can click many times on random and we get this kind of object here. I think it's pretty nice and complex so a good example for toon shading. Now uh, right mouse click new material and now we get to the interesting point. Uh, here under Arnold you have the AI tune that's new in Arnold 5.1 AI tune that's a tune shader. When we render it now, we see nothing special, nothing toonish here. 
Well, why is that? Let's have a look at the tune shader here in the attribute editor. The first section is called edge and edge of course is critical for tune shading. Uh, the edge color is currently set to uh, black and the edge is activated so why don't we see an edge here and this is a point where I had to search quite a bit until I found it and uh, I show you where it is. Uh, edge requires contour filter The contour filter is here. That's the render settings. Here you go to the Arnold render settings and then you go to the filters. It's a contour filter. You go to the filters and the default setting which works all right, which we ch just see working here in this scene uh, is the type Gaussian which is that blur thing, anti-aliasing technique and there is no contour here but there is further down contour so that's what you need to change and then you close it and then you have the contour appearing here you can change the color of course now maybe to white let's go back to black and now you go further down here uh, Let's leave the edge as it is. This is just to keep you going. And here under specular, you, the, the weight currently is set to zero. That's why it's sort of flat, like a lamp shader. But now we raise the weight of the specularity. And now you get that shading look, that tunish shading look which is very nice indeed. The dancer is here in the reflection. And now you can start playing with the colors. For example, the color for the specularity, if you want to give it a bluish tint, just a little bit of a tint like this, you can start working with this. So I hope this gets you going and enjoy tune shading with Arnold. I mean, the solid angle guys know how to do it. Bye. used to be a Mac person, I still have an Apple computer and a couple of other Apple devices and Android devices, uh, but uh, my main workhorse for Maya is a Windows machine and um, I use this program, Virtual Dub, uh, for converting lots and lots of single images into one movie file. And I'll show you just how this works because I really like this program because it's so lean and clear. So that's uh, virtualdub.org and uh, you download it for 64-bit uh, of course and you just open that zip file. It's, it's already here and in that folder you have uh, you don't have to extract it actually uh, I, I never extracted it ever uh, because here you have the uh, application vdub64 I double click it and this window opens thank you Avery Lee for programming this it's a very nice window it's totally gray open video file and I just pick the first one in that row it's not that one way you see the thumbnails from but it's that one so the first one is this one frame 0001 and I just open this now and and that's basically what the uh, 
what the window shows me, I usually go before I render this to a VI, I go to video and um, you don't see it right here, it's a frame rate and change the frame rate from say 10 frames per second to well say 15 because this uh, animation I think it was rendered in 24 actually I can do it in 24 that's fine I just save it as AV, AVI and uh, that's all I do and you'll see how quickly this program renders um, yes That's 200 frames. Finished. And that's the video which you saw at the beginning of this tutorial. And that's the video I'm going to show you now at the end of this tutorial. Well, have a very nice day.